Thank you very much, Chris. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, a very good morning to you all. Uh, it's really a pleasure for us to have you physically in our building, and thank you very much. And uh, thank you to Jim in particular for this great initiative that you started last year and that we're very happy to be associated with. So in five or ten minutes, uh, let me say for 2012, I would highlight perhaps four uh, areas of our work. Uh, first of all, uh, we, we must point to the um, global IP systems that we run, the PCT, Madrid, uh, and the Hague system for industrial designs. Just to say what I think Carsten has probably s said already this morning, that to a certain extent, the activity in the IP area is almost counter-cyclical. When you compare it to the, the fragility and uh, uncertainty that prevails in the, economic, uh, in the world economy, we find that last year our PCT applications went up by some 6.3%, for example, to around about 195,000 international patent applications, a lesser rise for Madrid trademarks and a lesser rise for uh, <coughs> designs. And for 2013, we expect a somewhat similar story, although the percentages will be a little bit different. And why is this? Because, well, we here uh, located in Europe tend to think uh, in European terms, but of course there are centres of growth elsewhere in the world and we see this coming through uh, in our global systems, and we see tremendous growth coming from uh, Asia in particular, and uh, we expect that only to continue. And I would say another reason is that of all the economic sectors, perhaps the innovative sectors have uh, performed the, the best throughout the crisis, and we, and we see I think, again, in terms of the projected investment in research and development for over the course of 2013, it's expected to rise by some 3.7% to 1.5 trillion US dollars. So, you know, the US, the, the knowledge economy is here and it's driving demand. So <clears throat> that's something that we think is much is the same for 2012, 2013. It's a continuing narrative. Uh, in terms of what we are doing, we expect geographical expansion in our Madrid and, Madrid and Hague systems to continue, and we expect the EPCT, which is a great service for uh, users, to uh, uh, continue on its, on, its, on its way and delivering results this year. Uh, and we expect the externalization of our data to become more important, and we would hope that very soon patent scope will become the largest free public database uh, of technology disclosures in the world. And that is uh, due to occur somewhere around about the quarter uh, mark of 2013. Then let me uh, point secondly to the normative area. And of course the highlight last year was our Beijing, a new multilateral treaty, the Beijing Treaty on the Protection of Audiovisual Performances. Okay, it, it completes the work that was done actually in 1996 to update the copyright and related rights, you know, uh, illegal, international legal framework to the digital environment. Uh, and that was a major success. And it's terribly important because I think that underlying that, as you all know better than we know, uh, we have a, a situation in which we have a global, we have global economic behavior and we have global uses of technology, but we have national you know, uh, regulatory frameworks for intellectual property. And, and they are not going to go away quickly, but what we have to do is to provide an international legal framework which will ensure an even playing field and try to prevent recourse to technological mercantilism or technological protectionism as the stakes get higher and higher and higher in the field of technology, which we see, for example, in the patent wars, as they get higher and higher and higher, it's going to be more and more important not to have unevennesses in the national frameworks that can be exploited to the disadvantage of the use of technology around the world. So we, pay, uh, we place a lot of emphasis on, on getting the normative agenda going again 
and we expect another treaty this year. There's a diplomatic conference that will be held in Marrakesh in June, uh, which uh, will, we hope, give rise to a treaty to improve access to published works on the part of the visually impaired and, and uh, the print disabled. Uh, and we expect also to bring towards the setting of a diplomatic conference in 2013 broadcasting and designs, design law formalities. So there is movement in that area. The third area I would signal is that we all in the international uh, uh, community, international organisations, are very much aware that the world is changing rapidly and that, uh, you know, things that were exclusive for international organisations when they were designed 50 years ago are no longer exclusive. You can say, if you like, that international organisations have competitors or another way of putting it is there are more ways than one of achieving a result internationally. One way is through the classic international organisation, but other ways are public-private partnerships uh, or indeed wholly private foundations. So there are more, there's a greater variety and complexity of vehicles available to achieve international results. And we have to be very conscious of that and responsive to it in the international community. Uh, and in, in international organisations. For us, it means that we will be looking increasingly for public-private partnerships as we will look to involve the enterprise sector for the first time in our annual meeting of member states in September this year. We will have at least a half day devoted to listening to the enterprise sector. Uh, so. This is a general transition that's occurring uh, and one that we really want to ensure that we address. Uh, in terms of specific products, and then I better stop talking, uh, let me point to, global, uh, to WIPO Research, which is a public-private partnership uh, for uh, endeavouring to accelerate research and development in an area of market failure, namely neglected tropical diseases. Uh, which does not get enough attention because, of course, uh, the consumers are the poorest people on earth and therefore uh, if you are thinking of investing in research and development to get a return, you're not going to get it commercially in that area and so it's typically an area for public intervention. But that has gone very well in the course of uh, 2012. We expanded our, our membership considerably. The membership went from 30 to 62. <coughs> five continents represented, you know, uh, and many good universities, public institutions, the National Institutes of Health of the United States, for example. And we have a database with 190 distinct contributions that have been made by 19 members to license free of charge uh, uh, technologies in, in this area. So we hope to see that uh, advance this year. And I mentioned one other public-private partnership that we hope to see advance considerably this year, which is between publishers uh, and uh, the uh, World Blind Associations or National Blind Associations for getting copies of uh, literary works in accessible formats available in a central repository which can be shared internationally. Uh, and this, we think, will uh, make a very, very good contribution. So uh, I will limit um, my comments there. I haven't mentioned the whole area of infrastructure, which we think is particularly important, uh, and our um, wiring of uh, patent offices around the world and something that we will be moving to do for uh, collective management organisations also. But uh, we can perhaps draw that out in the discussion.